Hello, you two. Well, I picked me up another vintage laptop. It's another ThinkPad, a, uh, an IBM variant of the ThinkPad this time. This is a ThinkPad T23. When I ordered it, I thought it was a T20 because the guy just put the type instead of the model number. So, that was a little misleading, but it turned out okay because it still supports all that I want it to support. This thing supports a variety of vintage OSs, which is why I wanted to get one of these. It supports Windows 95, 98, ME, 2000, XP, NT4, and IBM OS 2. So it supports a wide variety of uh, operating systems on this thing. Well, this thing does, so that's the reason I bought it, for some vintage computing, and I think it's going to do very well based on what I've done with with it so far. I've experimented a little bit with it and I think it'll be very good for what I want to use it for. So let's go over the machine. First you have the top cover. Now there's this glaring sticker up here. For some reason these are all over the laptop. I guess maybe these were deployed to employees of some business and they decided to put these on there so that they were not stolen by uh, maybe employees or something, so they put these on there. And this is a thick sticker. It's like somebody adhered a refrigerator magnet to the to this case. It's it's not coming off with your fingernail. No way. <laughs> you probably have to heat gun it off if anything. But I'm I'm not, not gonna risk that because it's this because this side has the screen on it. So there you go. It's basically it's supposed to be a theft deterrent. It looks as if there was used to be something right there as well. And if you look at the bottom Looks like somebody tried to heat gun one of the labels off down here because there's a stolen property uh, tag thing down here. Look at that. <laughs> so there you have it. Now, let's give you a tour of this machine from the left side. Here we have ventilation for the CPU. PC card slots. Two Type 2s, one Type 3. Uh, I believe. Uh, an IR transceiver. However, the cover is missing. I have the cover. It's just that this entire plastic piece is falling apart with uh, the uh, the audio ports. It also connects to the hard drive. If you pull this out, you get a hard drive. And the plastic in there is just breaking apart. So I'm just going to see if I can't get a parts machine and get a plastic piece for this. Maybe another broken T23 or something. I'll just get a cheap one and replace this. So there's your audio and your uh, IR transceiver. On the front you get two stereo speakers which have su a surprising amount of imaging based on how close they are together. On the side you have the DVD drive. Yes, that's right folks, a DVD drive. comes out in a similar fashion to the Lenovo ThinkPad I have. And now we have the back. Get a Kensington lock port, get a video dongle connector thingy which you can use for S-Video I think as well. Uh, serial, parallel, VGA, uh, modem 56K, 10100 Ethernet, uh, DC in jack, which is a 16 volt, uh, 4.5 amp uh, adapter, two USB ports, and a PS2 mouse port. I actually have a mouse that would go really well with this computer. I should dig it out and put it right next to it. So, here's the bottom of the machine. You saw it before that stolen property thing there. It looks like somebody tried to heat gun off. I wonder if this was in a pawn shop at one point. <laughs> There's even another stop thing there, and like an inventory tag, and Here's the COA. It came with Windows 2000 Professional back in its day. So I assume this came out probably in the early 2000s, probably 2000 or 2001. Uh, would that be my best guess? Because there was a period in which you could get three different operating systems on a laptop. You could get 2000, XP, or 98. Uh, and I suspect this one was probably bought for a business, so they put 2000 on it. So they could connect to the Windows 2000 servers in that particular business. So there you have it. Uh, here we have a docking station connector. 
if I get the docking station I bid for on eBay, I will definitely make a video of that because that has a story all on its own. Here's the label itself. Made in Mexico, manufactured by IBM. So it's a true IBM ThinkPad instead of a Lenovo variant. Under here you have the Wi-Fi card and the Ethernet and modem combo card. And under here you have the RAM. It's two sticks of 128 meg in there. So there's 256 megs of RAM in this machine. Now let's take a look at the battery real quick. Try to see if I can get it out with one hand. Hey, I did. Nice. It's just a simple IBM battery. It was made in Japan, so that's good. It's a lithium-ion battery. Not sure how many cells are in it, but I'd gather it's like a three or four cell or something like that. Very nice. So, there you have it. That's the ThinkPad uh, from the outside. Let's look at it from the inside this time. Now, the outside looks a little rugged, but the inside is beautiful. Look at this. The plastic has no shiny spots, no blemishes. Well, a little bit of one down there, but that's really it. The keyboard has next to no wear on it. Look at that. There's no shiny spots anywhere. Not on the backspace key, not on the enter key, not even on the space bar. Look at that. Uh, there's like a very slight bit of wear there, but not much. It's just... The, the keyboard's gorgeous. It, it looks like it was barely used. However, the outside looks like it was toted around in a bag for a long time. So, I don't know what the deal is there, but there's no trackpad. All you have is the IBM track point, or the nipple mouse, as it's affectionately called. Um, this is my favorite pointing device on laptops because it's so much easier to use than a trackpad, in my opinion. So you get your pointing device here, you get left and right click and scroll click. So, so you click that for your... So this basically acts as a middle mouse button. Uh, the track point head itself, the nipple itself if you will, uh, is a little dry. So what I'm thinking I might do is buy another dot or another nub off of eBay. One of the uh, actual rubber ones. This one feels like it's fabric of some sort. I don't know what it is. But I'm going to get uh, one of the ones that's more like a... Uh, it's kind of like a basketball dots sort of material. I'm going to get one of those and stick it in there uh, eventually. So there you have it. The screen is is really nice, actually. Uh, it's a 1024 by 768 screen, which is perfect for a vintage laptop like this. Uh, it's active matrix, but the response time does not look that great. I've, I saw mouse trails when experimenting with OS's on it, so I assume the response time is not all that great. Uh, but it's better than passive matrix, where the response time is next to none. <laughs> so, let's try it out. I got the power adapter with it. I had to buy that separately. I bought this for about $45, and I got the power adapter itself think for like 12 something like that it's a genuine IBM one as you can see it's not a fake one the fake ones suck don't buy them so let's plug it in here get in there you and we'll boot it up I've put an I've put an OS on it for just for the sake of playing around with it the last OS I put on here was Windows NT 4.0 Service Pack 6. So we'll we'll boot the machine up into that. Well, first we'll take a look at the BIOS. So F1, I think. Yep. So here we are. We have a a mobile Pentium 3 processor running at 1.13 gigahertz. We have 256 megs of RAM, which is far more than I needed a vintage laptop. But I'm going to leave it in there, despite the fact. And, you know, there you have it. Um, it also has a 30 gigabyte Hitachi hard drive, which has one bad sector on it. I did check that. It has one bad sector. But I don't think one bad sector is going to hurt Windows at all. But if, if it dies, I have another 40 gig I can stick in there, another Toshiba 40 gig drive, which has held up for quite a long time itself, and another Dell. So there's a backup in case that goes, and another backup if that goes too. So... There you have it. 
Let me, uh... It makes a little beepy sound when the machine shuts off, which is a little weird. So, oh yeah, I forgot to go over one thing. The keyboard does have its usual array of media buttons, ThinkPad button, sound buttons, and it also has a keyboard light up here, which I'll show you in a minute. But let's start the machine first and show you how it runs. Oh, blurry. Yep, Windows NT4. So, originally I bought this machine to be like a dedicated OS2 machine, but it looks like I need a floppy drive to even boot the installer, so in order to make that happen, I need to get the docking station and a special floppy drive uh, to get it to work. I think there's a special connector on the back of it. Uh, as I recall, I can't quite remember. I haven't used a ThinkPad like this in years. So, all right. Control Alt Delete, three finger salute. Ooh. Enter the password here. And let's go. As you can hear, the speakers are not that loud. <laughs> so, and that's at full volume. Let me go down to the uh, sound thing here. Yeah, that's at full volume. It's really not that loud. So this is Windows NT 4.0 installed on this machine, and it runs quite well. Let's demonstrate some, some of the built-in programs running. I have uh, Windows NT 4 comes with administrative tools, so you can do things like back up your machine, administer disks, and manage users. There's some startup items. I have nothing in the startup items. Command prompt. So you actually have the NT command prompt. Look at that, 1996. Very good year. <laughs> there you have it. What else do we have here in Windows NT4? Uh, it's just standard stuff, really. Uh, paint, notepad, word. Oh, yeah. I always like this clock. Reminds me of the clock in Windows 3.1, only a little bit more modern looking if you can call that modern looking these days you can't really alright we have a few games free cell, minesweeper, pinball, solitaire, I'll open up pinball, why not 3d pinball works great on this machine space cadet pinball so as you can hear the sound works great too I just had to install a bunch of drivers. The nice thing about these uh, ThinkPads and Think Centers and other machines is that they all have officially supported drivers. So instead of getting an old custom build and getting one of these, you can actually find drivers really easily. So the built-in sound card I th is an AC97 of some sort. Uh, I forget what it is. We'll have to look at all the... Uh... You know what? We'll just look at that now. Hold on a second. Go to my computer, go to properties, and take a look at the device manager. If I could find it. Where is the device manager in Windows NT4? It might not have had it. You know, I really can't remember. I haven't used this in a long time. I got hyper. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> AT&T Mail, CompuServe, HyperTerminal, HyperTerminal, BBS, Microsoft BBS. Oh, my God. Wow, that takes me back to my days as when I was just in my single digits. Woo! See, I don't know where the device manager is in Windows NT. I don't, I don't even know if it has one or not. Hmm. Uh, old Linux from two years ago. Three years ago. Wow getting old man <laughs> but yeah Ubuntu 10.04
Uh, I remember. I'm, I I wish Linux was still like this when it had menus and buttons and things. At least when Ubuntu was like that. Now you have to get Mint to get that, or other variants of Ubuntu. But anyway, let's use Linux to take a look at the condition of the hard drive. Thirty gig hard drive. Uh, hopefully not that many bad sectors. Let's take a look at the smart data. Oh, pff, it's one bad sector. I'm not going to worry about that. <laughs> it's not even a permanently bad sector anyway. It's a reallocated sector. Yeah, there's no uncorrectable. Uh, sectors at all, so it's just a reallocated. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's one bad sector. That's not going to hurt anything. It does have wireless, uh, but apparently Linux can't detect it for some reason. It's weird. All right, let's take a look at uh, LSPCI just to see what kind of chipsets and stuff are in this machine. Ah, yes. Look at all these. All right. A lot of Intel chipsets here. Woo! Look at all that. Intel Audio. It's AC97. It has an S3 Super Savage video adapter. <laughs> Texas Instruments card bus. Intel, um, yeah, it's Intel Pro 10100 Ethernet. Got a modem, and it does have wireless. I'm pr pretty darn sure. I saw the card in there. It has wireless. Maybe it's a really strange chipset. I don't know. But yeah, that's what's in this machine. Shows how much I know. Um, when I was installing drivers, I did notice there was like a crystal audio thing in there. Uh, I don't. I think that's just that might be an audio controller. Um, I'm really not sure. I'll have to look in another version of Windows just to see exactly what's in here. But uh, MIDI stuff does work, although the uh, card in here is not great. Here's Canyon. Yeah, the MIDI in uh, this laptop is not great. <laughs> this is why having a desktop for uh, vintage gaming is much better, because you can put a sound card in there and change the sound. This is a MIDI file I wasn't aware of. I've only ever seen this in Windows NT4, and that's Passport. I like that MIDI file. It's pretty cool. But yeah, that's all the media playback and everything. It's just a short overview of what's going on here. I really thought Windows NT had a device manager. That's weird. Hmm. That's very strange. I thought it would. Oh well. Well, I can tell you what's in it uh, mostly. Uh, 
from my memory. It has an S3 video adapter, which I haven't seen in a long time either, uh, which has plenty of support from vintage OSs and even from modern-day Linux. I tried Ubuntu 10.04 on here, and it worked fine. So there you have it. Uh, I'm not sure if anything newer will work, but I can always try. <clears throat> but that S3 video adapter should have plenty of support from older operating systems. Uh, I'm not sure what kind of audio it has, but you heard what it sounds like. The MIDI's not that great, uh, and the speakers don't get that loud. The screen, let me see if I can demonstrate uh, the response time of the screen. See that trailing there? Yeah, the screen does not have wonderful response time, but that was typical of the time period, really. You can see that trailing there. That was typical of the time period, and that's just the way it was. But, uh, there you go. Uh, what else does this thing have in it? It has a wireless B. It has built-in wireless B, surprisingly enough. Uh, I forget what kind of card it is, uh, but it's the, the card did not get picked up by Linux, so I suspect it's a very odd chipset of a card. Um, 10100 Ethernet, uh, 1.13 gigahertz mobile Pentium 3, and, uh, there you have it. Nice thing is I think somebody tightened up the hinges, because the hinges feel extremely tight on this computer. They don't feel that tight on my Lenovo ThinkPad, so I should probably open those up and tighten them down a little bit. So, this is going to be... My vintage, my primary vintage laptop. I'm going to be using this for vintage software, vintage games when on the go, uh, and for demonstrating old programs and things like that. So it should be quite a fun machine to do that on. Uh, especially having a portable one would be nice if I want to bring old games over to a friend's house or something just to, to play. And this machine is more than capable of it with the pretty with the fast Pentium Three it has in it. So there you have it. That's. Uh, that's this ThinkPad T23 that I got for uh, basically a dedicated vintage laptop since I don't really have one anymore. Now I do again. I haven't had a really nice vintage ThinkPad since my A21e. So hopefully this one lasts a lot longer than the A21e did, which was not that long. So, yeah, there you have it. Let me shut her down here. Windows NT sounds I've always enjoyed for some reason. And it's off. You know it's off when you hear that beep. That's kind of a nice confirmation, actually. Now, there's one thing I have to complain about so far with this laptop, and that is whatever coating they used on the plastic. It, feel, it, it almost feels like they attempted to use a soft-touch sort of plastic with this notebook. And, uh, you know, like a rubberized plastic, almost. And it feels a lot stickier. Well, it's not exactly sticky, but... Uh, you can scratch this with your fingernail, and black material comes off on your on your fingernail. And uh, I'm wondering if this wasn't left in the sun, and that caused it that to happen, or if uh, maybe this is just the design of the material, and if this is really rubber, if it's breaking down or something. That's very odd. It's it's even they even go as far as to put it on things like the port doors, for uh, or the port doors, the uh, doors on the bottom for. The Wi-Fi card, the Ethernet card, the uh, the RAM. I mean, I even scratched a little bit off just as an experiment on one side, because you know, whatever, right? And uh, you can see that uh, there's a plastic layer underneath. It's kind of hard to see on camera, actually, but there's a plastic layer underneath. This is just like a layer of like a coating of some sort. I don't know if that's paint or rubber or what, but whatever it is, it seems to break down over time. And uh, my Lenovo ThinkPad doesn't have that problem. It, it feels like it has a soft touch, but it doesn't feel quite as rubbery and sticky as this does. So um, if anybody knows more about these older ThinkPads, do let me know. I'm wondering if they didn't use like some sort of rubber coating on these back in the day or something. I mean, it, it's convenient because when you have it in your lap, it's not going to fall out. It's, it's going to stay. But I'm wondering if that wasn't just a very common thing with uh, think the ThinkPads back in those days. Anyway, that is just a little brief 
well, not so brief now, a look at uh, this IBM ThinkPad T23, my new primary vintage laptop. Uh, this should be should be quite a f quite fun to play with the uh, the older stuff on here. I'm some of the older stuff is really nostalgic, and I miss it a whole lot. So it'll be fun to play around with. Hopefully, I can get OS2 on this thing someday. Uh, I just need to somehow work out a way to get a floppy drive connected, and then that can happen right away. So there you have it, guys. Hope you enjoyed the video, and have a good one, everybody. Ciao.